is all things evil, fear, shame, and self-destruction. The New Mutants was directed by Josh Boone, who co-wrote it with Nate Lee. I'm assuming the K is silent anyway. It stars Blue Hunt, Andy Taylor-Joy, Maisie Williams, Charlie Heaton, and Henry Zaga. And I think that the long production process plus the length of time between release and me watching it has helped me enjoy it for what it is. This is one of those that, you know, it went through a bunch of reshoots and release date moves and then Disney said to Fox, please join us, we'll give you all of this money. And they went, okay then. And that threw a lot of things into flux. There were a lot of projects that people were scared perhaps would never come out or they'd be heavily sanitized and edited to fit the Disney brand, not realizing that Disney has released some dark stuff over the years. But I understand the fears. I totally I totally get it. And this is one of those that, like I say, just, just struggled in that window, if you will, where is it ever going to come out? And, you know, there were more reshoots done. The, the release date just kept slipping and slipping and slipping. But the hype train kept building because they, you know, had new trailers and new teasers that would then sell the horror elements more. And, you know, they pivot more to that because that's what people were really, you know, latching on to. It just became this process of will it ever come out or they're just going to keep you know reshooting and moving the date and eventually it did and people were split it now sits at a 5.3 on imdb and i think this is because and i've mentioned it before i'm not the only person either who's mentioned it of this polar tendency which i think we're moving away from finally from what i've seen but people either tend to think everything's amazing or it's awful. There is no middle ground. And I don't agree with that. I consider this maybe a 6.5. I don't do numbers a lot, but I would consider this perhaps a 6.5. It's not, I don't think it's a 7. That's reserved for other things, but I don't think it's a 6. It's definitely more than a 6. So, <laughs> but part of what I liked about this is the fact that it's 94 minutes. It isn't one of those where it tries to just give everyone you know, 20 minutes of character development before it even starts the plot, which in five characters, that's already an hour and 40 minutes. So I like the fact that it gets on with it. I do think perhaps a little longer might have helped, yes. But half the reason I watched it is because of that runtime. I was looking for something to watch and everything else that I wanted to catch up on was like two hours, two hours 30, 240, I know I definitely saw you know, well upwards of two hours, and I wanted to, I wanted to do something else on the on that day. So this finally got watched. I put it up on Disney Plus, and that's it. I sat there, watched it, and yeah, like I say, I enjoyed it for the most part. I'm not saying it's perfect. There are a lot of problems that I have with this, but one of the things I do not have a problem with is, like I said, the, the speed of it. It gets in, gets out. I don't think there's anything that's really missing. I think there could have been stuff added, but it works with what's there. I enjoyed a lot of the acting, a lot of the characterization, not all of it, and I'll get on to that. But again, I thought it was I thought it was absolutely fine for what it was trying to do. One of the things perhaps I didn't really enjoy though was the relationship. I like the representation. I'm there for it. I think Danny and Rain being together is fine conceptually. I just don't think how it was done worked. Yes, Rain, you know, only having Ileana in the facility for however, however long and not being able to get on with her at all, let alone enter into any kind of relationship. I understand why she'd be kind of, oh, this is a new girl who I can be really interested in. But where's Danny's motivation to suddenly jump? I know it's like, oh, she's coming to this out of nowhere and she's like the fish out of water. But that's there's, there's other people in that space who can help her. She doesn't have to just latch on to Rain. I do think it was a bit too fast in that it's like when you play the sims and you want to you know get into a relationship and get your kid and get your great career so you just speed run life effectively and as we know that is not how life actually works you can't do it that way it happens every so often but it's the rarity it's not the rule now the performances of that you know Maisie and blue i think sold it well their chemistry worked i believe them together but i just don't think that that speed, uh, like I say, of that relationship formation really worked for me. Ileana, I know, you know, it's kind of one of those abrasive characters, I guess, but 
She was just such an unlikable bitch. <laughs> just being completely honest, for so much of the film, that even when she was talking about her trauma, I was kind of like, oh, that's sad for you, but shut up. I found her hard to get on with, so I think the only moment, or the point that I you know, flipped that around, was pretty much towards the ending, when she steps up and helps, and we see the cute, real Lockheed. That was adorable. But that's it. Like Until that point, I was just like, if she dies off, I'd be very happy. Or at least I wouldn't be super upset, let's put it that way. Charlie Heaton, he, I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be nice here. Charlie Heaton just was there. I think he he was definitely one of the most underused elements of this film. He could have not been in it, and I don't think we'd have lost much. And that's where you know it does lose a lot of points for me. But Henry Zaga, I think, was fine as well. You know, the, the sort of cocky, brash, you know, current relief. But then again, you see this darkness. You see why he's there what he did, and those horror-filled moments, they were great. And that's what this really works as. When it was pitched, when it was sold on the horror, that pivot really is what is what made this this actually make sense and what, what I enjoyed most. I like a good creeping dread with occasional releases. Unearned jump scares can just go. I do not have the time or patience for them. I have anxiety. It's not healthy. But building dread... You know, like I say, with those release valves every so often, is great. I love that stuff and psychological horror, all that kind of stuff. And that's what this does well. It does that creep. And yes, it still gives you a big, you know, fun fight at the end, which, you know, there's, there's issues with that. Some of the CGs are ropey. Um, but again, I think it was kind of rushed out towards the end because people were just like, will you just get it out the door? So, yeah, on the whole, it's fine. I like the fact that we have, again, more of the characters that people aren't super aware of. For every, you know, Spider-Man, X-Man, Avenger out there, there are the, these kind of characters who people know less. And I am definitely in support of bringing more of these unknown characters to the fore. But I think either two things would have made this better. One, not doing all the reshoots and releasing it as it should have been originally. That would have probably been the ideal version. We'd have probably had none of the issues that we had. But perhaps the alternative would be, and I know I said I enjoyed it because it was shorter, but perhaps spending a little more time. Develop the relationship with Danny and Rain. Develop the softer side of Ileana so we can actually sympathise with her. Remember that Charlie Heaton exists. <laughs> but... Like I say, that's all hypothetical. It's all what I would like. For what we got, it's okay. It's a 6.5, and that's fine. So thank you very much for letting me talk about this, as always. And until next time, take care.